Knight of Cups The Knight of Cups like most if not all of the Cups suit, is an optimistic, good card to see in a reading. Like all Knights slash Knights, this one often comes bearing messages. Usually these are the kind of good news that we all want to receive. General, in general the Knight of Cups would tell you that things are going to be going well. You are likely to be feeling charged up, ready for action. This card often means that good news, particularly in the realm of matters of the heart, is likely to be headed your way soon. Work, work projects are likely to move ahead in a positive way, sooner than you're expecting, when this card shows in a reading. You should be proud of your accomplishments and your contributions. Love, this is a very, very positive card to get when you are asking about love. If you are single, this card often indicates that someone is about to sweep you off your feet. If you are in a relationship, the night can indicate final commitments slash marriage. At the least, in the context of love, this card means positive messages, things that you would like to hear. Be open to exploration of your feelings. Finances, this card can mean that you will soon get very good news about your finances. The night often indicates messages that are uplifting and positive. If you're concerned about finances and get this card in a reading, if nothing else figure out exactly where you are financially, to the penny. The situation is almost certainly not as bad as you think. Health, if you are waiting on test results regarding your health and you get this card, relax and know that the news will be good. In general with your health, the night means you will soon be feeling better slash even healthier. Spirituality, you are getting ready to enter new realms in your spiritual exploration. The night often means that you will soon receive a message from spirit, this sometimes comes through another human, however, which will open up new ways of looking at things for you. Pay attention to things that seem like coincidence. These are often the way that spirit gets through to us. Tarot History The tarot has a fragmented history that intrigues historians, scholars, hobbyists, and spiritualists alike. Drawing on the concrete facts that are available, we will attempt to briefly explain the origins of the tarot and trace some of its milestones through the centuries. The designs of the 22 cards in the Major Arcana can be traced back as far as 1440, when the first known deck appeared in Italy. The three decks called the Visconti Trumps are generally regarded as the forefathers of the decks that are widely available today. It is believed that they were originally created as a game for nobles. It is not until centuries later that the cards re-emerged, this time as a tool of divination. In the latter half of the 15th century, the card makers in Marseilles, France began to standardize the trumps. Before this organized production, those who played the trumps could dictate which they wanted to include, and which they wanted substituted or eliminated. Certain cards, death, the devil and the tower in particular, were considered offensive by the more conservative nobles. These images caused religious leaders to attempt to ban the trumps. The first detailed reference to the trumps of the tarot is in the form of a sermon. This sermon, given by a Franciscan friar in Italy sometime between 1450 and 1470, contends that the trumps were invented and named by the devil. It condemns the use of the cards, and generally credits them with the triumph of the devil. According to the friar, the devil wins through the loss of the souls of those who play what was then, quite probably, nothing more than a simple game. The rebirth of the tarot, and its beginnings a means of divination, 
are attributed to Antoine Court de Gabellin in 1781. He believed it was Egyptian in origin, and that it contained mystical knowledge that had been purposefully encoded in the symbolism of the trumps. Specifically, he theorized that the cards were the key to lost Egyptian magical wisdom written by Thoth, the Egyptian god of inspired written knowledge. The trumps themselves began to noticeably evolve from this point forward. Changes were thought to have been introduced by the different secret societies who produced the decks. The first account of divination through the use of cards is attributed to Cartomancer Jean Baptiste Alliette, better known as Attila, in 1770. He was the first to publish divinatory meanings for cards and only 32 cards, plus one, representing the quarant, were included in this edition. At this time, only regular playing cards were mentioned. Later, Attila published several works that involved the tarot trumps specifically. It is no surprise that these later writings coincided with Dijbalan's then recently public treatment of the tarot as a wellspring of Egyptian occult knowledge. Etila must have anticipated the tarot's jump in popularity, his was the first deck available to the public expressly for the purpose of cartomancy. The discovery of the Rosetta Stone that translated the hieroglyphs of the Egyptians in 1799 did not yield any support to the theory that the trumps hailed from Egypt. Still, the belief endured and was augmented in 1857 with the introduction of the notion that the wandering Romani people, gypsies thought to be descendants of Egyptians, had carried the deck with them on their travels through Europe. In the 19th century, the famous occultist known as Eliphaz Levi developed a correlation between the tarot and the Kabbalah, the Hebrew system of mysticism. This fueled a new belief that the tarot originated in Israel, and contained the wisdom of the Tree of Life. The new theory brought all 78 cards together as keys to the mysteries, but again, there were no concrete facts to support it. Nevertheless, something important was accomplished. The theory would later serve as proof that the symbolism of the tarot crossed all boundaries. From this point forward, many magical and esoteric groups recognized the tarot as a timeless body of knowledge that had significance in every mystical path. Since that time it has been linked with almost every magical system or religion known to humankind. The tarot is comprised of archetypal images that cross linguistic, cultural, geographical, and temporal barriers. The Theosophical Society the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, the Rosicrucians, the Church of Light, and the builders of the Adytum all secured the tarot's position in the 19th and 20th centuries. In the United States of America, the tarot became popular and more readily available in the 1960s, when a period of exploration in spirituality began. Arthur Edward Waite is credited with the renaissance of the tarot in the 20th century. He commissioned artist Pamela Coleman Smith to create what he called the Rectified Tarot. Created by a member of secret societies also known as a revered mystic, Waite's version has been widely accepted as the standard, and is by far the most popular deck of the century rich in symbolism and easily understood due to the simple nature of the artwork. In the opinion of many learned tarot enthusiasts, the most significant change the deck has experienced is Smith's treatment of the minor arcana. Hers are the first pip cards to contain images depicting the meaning of the cards. These graphics allow readers to explain the significance of each card's nuance to Kaerans who, in most cases, have never encountered the cards before. This artistic trend can be traced through the majority of the decks produced after the writer Waite, and Smith's influence is readily recognized, as many of the images echo her drawings.
Today's tarot card designs reflect specific trends in sexuality, religion, culture, and philosophy. There are literally hundreds of interpretations, and more are being conceived as this is being written. The diversity of the styles allows tarot readers to choose a deck that suits their personalities, the subject of the reading, the person receiving the reading, or any other variable as they so choose. Certain decks have a serious tone, some have a dreamlike quality, others are full of cartoon images. The true beauty lies in the tarot's ability to retain its soul through each metamorphosis and incarnation. It is, on many levels, a mirror of those who work with it, and allows them to make each reading a truly personal experience.